All right, guys. Today, we are. this is the last part of the topic. There is one more section in your booklet, but we are not doing that. It's not on your test. So this last section is applications, basically some word problems using our straight lines. So it goes straight into the example because each question will just be slightly different. This first example says, a shop owner finds the number of DVD players sold each week, N, so N represents the number sold. Quickly please, is people still fidgeting? Quick, quick. D this number decreases as the price, which is called P, increases, which makes sense. If you put the price up in the shop, less people are going to buy it, right? Oh this relationship is given by the rule N equals 150 minus 0 0.3 P, right there on your page. So the first thing we want to do, this takes us way back to the beginning of the topic, we want to fill in a table of values. So we're given a table, we've got P as the top numbers, we have 100, 200 and 400, and we need to find N, which is the number that's going to get sold. So we're going to sub the 100 into the rule where the P is. Okay, so that's, get, get your calculators out. That is going to be 150 minus 0 0.3 times by 100. Okay, where cash, that is enough. Press equals. That is equal to 120. Now we want to find the second one. You don't need to retype it in again. We just want to change the P from 100. We now want it to be 200 and press equals. That's 90. And lastly, we want to change the 200 to 400 now. So that is equal to 30. Once the table is complete, it says in part B that we want to graph the relationship between the number of DVD players sold and their price. Now you will notice that there is no negative numbers in the table. That's because you can't sell a negative number of DVD players and it would be pretty silly to have a negative price as well. Okay, so because we don't have any negative numbers, we don't actually need all four quadrants of this graph. We only need the first one. So. When you draw this up, we are going to put enough chatter. We are going to put our axes right over on the left hand side for the vertical one and across the bottom. I just need to move that up so I have enough room. Oh, come here, Rilla. And straight across the bottom because we're only looking at positive numbers. Now, wait a second. Which letter is going where? So we have P and we have N. Normally we have X and Y. Cash, which one is going to go here on the horizontal axis? P. Correct. Very good. So the one that is the top in the top position of your table, that's where X normally is. Okay, so that is going to be on the X axis. This is going to be P across the bottom here. Then that means that the N, which is where Y normally is in our table, that's going to be on our Y axis, the vertical one. So this will be our N. Now often the numbers that we're using in these kinds of questions, we'll have to pick a scale. Okay, We're not going to go up by ones going up to 400, that's ridiculous. So we have to choose a scale. For the P axis, I've got 100, 200, and 400. Maybe I could go up by hundreds. That would make it pretty easy to draw. I don't want to make it too squashy though. I have got all this space here. 50. You could go 50s, but only do every second one. So I might go 100 there, 200, 300, 400, and 500. So you could have the 50s in between, but you are saving yourself some time by not labeling the grid lines in between. We don't actually need them because none of the points that we're plotting 
are in 50s. They're all in lots of 100. Okay, now for the vertical axes, the N. Our biggest number is 120. Anyone want to suggest to me a scale that I could use? Yes. 30. Yeah, so it would be 30, 60, 90, 120. That's all still very squished down here. Maybe 10. We've got plenty of space. If you've got the space, you do want to make it fairly large so that you can plot things a little bit more accurately. So let's go by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110 and 120. And even then we still have a bit of space to spare. All right, now comes the plotting part. Starting with the very first values in our table. P is equal to 100 and N is equal to 120. P is the horizontal axis. So you're starting on the horizontal. You want to find the 100, which if you can see my little mouse thing moving down here, and you want to go up to 120, and you want to put a dot, a big dot, or a cross. The next one is 200 for the P, and then up to 90, put a dot. The last one is 400, and 30 is the N value. Now remember that we are doing linear relationships. So we are expecting straight lines here, okay? So you should be able to grab your ruler and draw a line through all of those. Pretty close. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I did go too far, that's why it's not lining up. Because I didn't have it quite over the right spot, did I? There we go, that's better. Okay, and we draw our line. Now you could extend that line, which tells you a few interesting things, if you extend it all the way to the axes. It tells you, if you were to raise the price to $500, you would expect to sell no DVD players. Based on the trend of what has been happening with these other ones, if the price goes up to $500, we've hit zero. We wouldn't sell any, based on the trend that we've been given. Um, yeah, cool. All right, so that's our first one. Make sure you always label your axes. Very important, marks are always allocated for that and that you choose an appropriate scale. Let's move on to question two. Question two, a hiker walks at a constant rate of four kilometers per hour for four hours. Draw a table of values using T for time in hours and D for distance in kilometers. Use T between zero and four. Okay, so they've kind of helped us out. They've given us a table, and it has put the time, T, between 0 and 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what that meant. Now I need to fill it in to find out the distance that I'm travelling. So if I'm starting at time equals 0, I haven't walked anywhere, or the hiker. I'm assuming I'm the hiker here. The hiker has not walked anywhere. So how much distance have they travelled in zero minutes? Zero. Zero, right? They have gone nowhere because we're right at the very beginning. But it does say that they walk at a constant rate of four kilometres every hour for those four hours. So if I walk for one hour, how many kilometres have I covered, Oscar? Four. Four, excellent. Then I keep walking for the next hour and I'm going to do another four, which means I'll be up to eight. Then another hour passes, another four means I'm up to 12. And then finally for four hours, I'll be up to 16 kilometers that I have walked. Okay, and we have our table done. Now we want to draw the graph plotting the points for time versus distance. Time, the T goes on which axis, Noah? Um, the horizontal one and the vertical? The top one. The vertical. the vertical? Do you agree, Ethan? No. Where does it go? It's the horizontal. Yeah, horizontal. sorry, it's the horizontal. The top one here is always going to be your horizontal axis, so time down here. 
So our time starts at zero and we have one, two, three, and four. Okay, one space for each number because it wasn't very, didn't go very high, so that was a good scale to use. That means that the distance must be our vertical axis. The biggest distance that we have there is 16. Do I have 16 spaces on that grid? What's a better scale to use then? Fours. Fours. Two is better. Okay, fours, if you choose a bigger scale, you're going to be squishing your graph vertically. It will still be correct if you're careful, but you don't want to make it, you want to make it as big as you can, okay, because it's better. So I'm going to go by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Plotting, yeah, just perfect amount of space. At time is zero, the distance is zero. So that's going to be right there on the origin. Time is one, distance is four. Remember, always starting with the horizontal axes. Time is two, distance is eight. Time is three, distance is 12. And time is four, distance is 16. Should be a beautiful, straight, linear relationship. Now I do have I do have an arrow on the end of that because this guy could keep walking and he would continue to be doing his four kilometers per hour and it would keep going. However, again, can you stop talking please? You can you cannot have any negative numbers. He's not gonna have negative time, he's not gonna have negative distances, which is why we've only got the positive numbers working on this graph here as well. Alright, what was that, Ethan? Um, the time would still be positive, but usually that we would actually see this coming back down this way, but you don't normally go into, you can't, it's, that's actually called displacement instead of distances. That's more physics kind of thing. It's not actually a silly question because distances can have direction and then they would be negative, but we call those displacements instead. Okay. Part C, write a rule linking D with T. Remember, way back at the beginning of the topic, I gave you pages and pages of tables and you had to try and find the Y equals MX plus B rule for the table that I gave you. And what we learnt was whatever the numbers are going up by across the bottom here is what you times by and whatever is underneath the zero is the Y intercept. Yeah, so we're going to apply that here. We're just using D and T instead of X and Y. So for my table, let's have a look. These numbers here, they're going up nicely every single time. I am adding 4. Okay, so that 4 is going to be important. Instead of my rule being Y equals, which letter is replacing the Y? On the y-axis, it's a D, right? So it's going to be D equals, it's going up by 4s, so it's going to be 4T. And then normally we have a plus something on the end. And the number that we add on the end is the number underneath the 0. But there is a 0 underneath the 0. So you don't write plus 0 because that's silly. We just leave that off. So the equation is D equals 4T and we're done. All right. From the rule, once you've worked out a rule, then we can calculate other stuff. So part D, use your rule to find the distance travelled for 2.5 hours of walking. So 2.5 hours, that's a time. So I'm going to be substituting that in for the T in my rule. D for distance equals 4T would be 4 times by 2.5. 4 times 2.5 is 10. Now, what's even better is I could give units to that 10. That's a distance, remember. What unit am I using to measure my distances in? They were in kilometres. We were doing 4 kilometres, remember, every hour. So that's going to be a distance of 10 kilometres. So if you can include units in your answer, that is even better. 
Part E, use your rule to find the time taken to travel eight kilometers. The eight kilometers is a distance. That is the distance they have traveled and I'm trying to find the time. So I'm going to put that into my formula. So it was D equals four T, but the distance is eight. So it's eight equals four T. Now I know you can work this one out in your head, but they won't always be this easy. If I want to solve that equation, I have to get the T by itself. So I'm going to divide by four, divide by four, swap sides, T on the left, eight divided by four equals two. T equals two. Time, T for time. What was my units for time? T. Oh, one. Hours, was it hours? Yeah. Yes, it was, good. So it's going to take two hours to travel eight kilometers. That's it, your turn.